uh, hi, I'm Tim Frazier. I'm uh, Automotive Electronics Regional President. That's me. You've got to have a look here. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about, um, there's a couple things I want to talk about. One, January 1st, uh, next year, e-bike becomes its own division. And uh, as I was just talking um, to uh, Mark, Mark, yeah, Mark said, so it's legit. It's, it's really <laughs> legit. Okay. Um, so Automotive Electronics was uh, the founder in terms of sponsoring this startup that happened. Um, and Bosch is kind of a unique company. And what I want to do is tell you a little bit about why did it start in Automotive Electronics. And then secondarily, I want to kind of connect some dots. I'm a big pattern person. I'm like a data analytics guy, only I'm not smart enough to be one. Um, so I, I just connect dots. It's more like something you'd see your child do. But I'm going to try to connect some dots and, and connect two different industries because there's a pattern that I saw when I was connecting those dots. The one pattern was, um, I've seen this before, and then I started relating it to the pattern of what happened in automotive and uh, Bosch's history in that. So, automotive electronics. Um, I'm gonna give you this. So first of all, I think I'm, I used to be, in a former life, a professor or a, or a sales guy that just likes standing up. So automotive electronics is really just about all the electronics that are on the car. Um, you know, anybody have an airbag go off, save your life? That was automotive electronics. Anybody slam on their brakes in a stop and it controls your car so that you you know, you're not skidding, that's ABS, that's automotive electronics. Um, stability control, and you're driving out well in Michigan on ice, here at gravel and sand. Um, you know, you're going around a corner and you stay stable. Okay, so that's automotive electronics. In addition, automotive electronics is the parts on the car, which is the engine and managing that most efficiently. Um, we like reducing CO2 emissions, and we get better every year in trying to reduce those CO2 emissions. And we use um, electronics. Well, what was really cool was when we started doing electronics, innovation is really kind of who we are. Um, we like to solve problems. And, um, and one of the innovations that early on, back in the 70s, okay, um, we started trying to figure out how to make engines more fuel efficient. We started looking at um, how do we measure things better. And so we started developing sensors. I'm a control, I'm an engineer, geek, nerd, whatever you want to call me. Um, and one of the things I have is a degree in uh, control systems. And so when you start to try to control things better, you start to have to measure them better. And in order to measure it and control it, you have to measure it faster, higher resolution, performance data, you know, things that um, uh, happen. So we started developing our own sensors way back when, just to start controlling the combustion process. And we do a, a, a type of sensor called a MEM sensor, which is semiconductor based. And the cool part is that innovation came in again, and we created Boss Sensor Tech. So we took it from automotive, those same sensors, and that idea, and we brought it into the consumer electronics uh, industry. Um, from there, uh, well, I mean, hey, everybody's connected, right? So we actually started using some of that same sensing technology and putting it into connected cars. So like you have a small USB, or not, uh, USB charger port, you know, like you plug into your, I used to call it a cigarette lighter or a cigar lighter, but that PowerPoint, right? In that little device, you can measure the, uh, a crash. It's the same sensing technology that is able to detect um, the need for a, an airbag. So we started connecting it, putting it in, you know, so you can carry it with you, bring it into your car. There's a boss shaft. You get in an accident in a rental car, you know, the top three people on your list get called. So that's also automotive electronics. The other part that's automotive electronics, um, we're starting to look at how do we make how you interface to things simple. Um, the first thing I did when I went for a ride today was I said, where's my phone mount? I got my ride already. I just want the phone mount. Okay. The thing that most people use is a smartphone as their main interface to the world, the analog world we live in. And we're working on systems that you'll start seeing in cars um, and just you know standard vehicles 
that start using phone as a key. And it's not just a phone app. It recognizes that it's you. It can tell by you and the way you walk that it's you and not somebody else. Okay, so we're doing some really cool stuff, but I'm telling you, not as much as the smiles as when we're rocking it on a <laughs> okay? We have fun, but we're nerds, and we're not having that much fun because we don't smile a lot. So, so really, what we start looking at is um, this pattern that I was talking about. This is Bosch. This was 1906. We were in Springfield, Massachusetts, and we were the Bosch Magneto Company. So start thinking about that innovation. Our founder, you know, Robert Bosch, he took that spark. He actually created something that was called a magneto. And that helped get the combustion engine working, which eventually replaced the horses and the carriages. Okay? So 1906, he was one of those pioneers. Guess who he was working with? Henry Ford, Thomas Edison. I mean, like, these guys were the pioneers. You know, it's like the Gary Fishers of the, your e <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's really unique. And this ecosystem that happened, there were, there were four major things that happened that, make, that made this so unique. One, there was a tech ecosystem. Those pioneers, they were trying to figure out, how do I make them all the same? How do I make more of them? Because it used to be a craftsman thing, where it was just each one was unique. No, man, we got to make a lot of them. And we got to make them affordable. Okay, that was Henry Ford. Thomas Edison was working on light filaments, you know, electricity, okay, for the car, so you could drive at night. That tech ecosystem, and Bosch, you know, Robert Bosch, he was figuring out how to make it spark, okay? Control the spark. Um, tech ecosystem, the other thing was infrastructure. Um, the, the width of a road is based on the wheel track, okay? Those road dimensions were created around horses. So now you started to have to deal with infrastructure. Oh, wait a minute, regulation. What, how do you have a, they didn't have stoplights, okay? Think about it. They didn't have electricity, so they didn't have stoplights. So they had to start thinking about, I have a car and a horse-drawn carriage. How's this gonna work? Oh, wait a minute, it's like a e-bike and a car, or a bike and a car. We're still, we're still facing those same problems. So infrastructure then went into regulation and we started creating laws, okay? So there's this whole thing called FMVS 49, which is the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard, okay? It's this huge thing. I got my lawyer sitting in the background going, yeah, Tim, <laughs> talk about regulation. Nicely done. Yeah, okay. Good job. <laughs> and, and there's this huge, this huge federal document that exists. Well, you know, there aren't a lot of regulations yet. And those regulations sometimes are over or but in many regards, it's all around safety. So, you guys are doing the same thing, and, and here we are, 100 years later, 103 years, uh, 13 years later, I can do the math, 113 <laughs> years later, it's the same trend. You know, Bosch started with the e-bike drive unit, but then it was the battery system, it was the display system, it was the controls, now it's, it's the ABS, it's the connectivity. The drive unit was where we started. And we see that e-bikes are helping enable another part of mobility because, <laughs> guess what? A lot of people don't like sitting in their car for two hours commuting. We're starting to rethink our mobility solution. And e-bikes and bicycles and e-scooters are all mechanisms that we're starting to rethink that with. Now, do we have the perfect solution? Um, I would say not yet. but. We're part of that, that ecosystem, that tech ecosystem that, that's bringing us forward. So I mentioned uh, sensors and sensing. So kind of connecting some of that sensing because it's, it's an enabler toward the future. So if, if you're holding in your hand, uh, one of the things I would say is, it's, uh, if you have a smartphone, more than likely uh, you have a greater than 50% probability that you have a Bosch sensor in your phone. So your ability when you turn it and it auto-rotates, that's a Bosch sensor, okay? So, um, you know, we're, we're in more than, uh, than just that related to the sensing technology. And when we start thinking that same sensing technology, it's also in the e-bike. 
we're looking at the hardware and software controls and how fast we're measuring it. I heard somebody say, yeah, uh, the power rating out of the Bosch system is probably more accurate than, um, than what uh, you're seeing out of the, the, the pedals that you're using, the power pedals, power right, pedal. for measurement. So you're seeing that data. You're measuring it, and you're measuring it, you know, in, mic in milliseconds, and you're constantly adapting. So those sensors are the enabling technology associated with that. So looking forward to the next 20 years. You know, I was going to say 100 years. Okay, come on. Let's just do 20, okay? Um, because it's only been 10 since we started, and five in the US, and we're insanely more successful because of all of you, okay? Because we're working together on solving the problems, and we're, we're starting to deal with the technology infrastructure, the amount of spins that we're getting, in terms of next generation product, it's happening faster. The battery packs are getting bigger. Um, and uh, we're getting more power out of the systems. Um, we're, getting, we're figuring out how to, how to uh, have more connectivity on the system. And we're, but the other part we need to do is also start talking about where do we go next in terms of working together. So it's not just the e-bike experience it's the ride experience, it's the service experience, it's the regulation, it's the infrastructure. And it all needs to come together in order for it to really accelerate. So, I'm automotive, and I wanna talk about some of the things we're doing with regards to safety. The system that we're demonstrating here, no, we're, this isn't target practice. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, um, this is part of our test track. And we have pedestrian um, dummies that go across, and then we have cyclist dummies. And we have a system that's called automatic emergency braking. And so it's utilizing video and radar systems in order to provide an interrupt to the driver to force an interaction to protect the cyclist, or the pedestrian, or the vulnerable road user, you know, whoever that is that's on a scooter or something. So we're working on that. In addition to that, we're already starting to look at other ways to do it. And this is the connectivity piece. We're working with industry leaders now, different companies, both automotive and cycling entities. Um, I saw somebody from SRAM. SRAM's part of that team. I, Trek's part of it. We have Ford and GM and Audi and you know um, Honda. We have companies coming across and crossing the chasm. Okay. That chasm of, oh, no, you're, you're a cyclist. No, we're, we're people, okay? And the idea of actually hitting somebody and hurting them while you're driving your car, that's devastating. So we look at that and we say, we have to do something about it. And that's also where we're working on those next generation systems that start measuring the intention of the cyclist. So you know a pattern of they've been riding and pedaling, they're currently cycling, they're in a cadence, they're accelerating at this rate, um, and, and here's their last GPS trajectory. Well, you're coming around a blind corner, and that car can't see them. Imagine the ability of a personal safety message that's communicating and pinging, and saying, I'm coming around the corner, here's my trajectory, I'm coming around the corner, Foggy night, icy night, snowy night, coming around the corner, the car interacts with that, that personal safety message and gives a, an attention. And it might just be a small brake jerk, but it's that ability, that, that, that ability to recognize, pay attention, your, your eyes should be on the road. And it's in that instant that we save somebody. And that's, that's what Bosch is about. Bosch is about making sure it's invented for life. So I'm really excited about this, and I know that together, working around those four elements, around that technology ecosystem, whether it's enhancing our rides, whether it's making it more comfortable, whether it's providing more communication and data and safety or higher performance characteristics on each cyclist, um, the uh, infrastructure, making sure that we're engaging, you know, we had the mayor here earlier. We started talking to him about some things around how, you know, bike lane garbage, okay? You know, clean the street every once in a while. It's simple things, okay? How do you engage in your government? You can't be passive in this. You have to engage, okay? 
and um, regulation and infrastructure. Um, we have uh, people for bike. We have I, um, you know, having the trail access. These are all elements. It's like a, it's like making a cake, right? You know, you're you're putting the ingredients in, and if you don't put the baking powder in, it's not going to rise. Okay, we have to work together. It's all of those four elements, um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I just want to show another picture. Okay, this was our founder. Okay, he was riding a bike back when everybody else was riding a horse. Okay, I know he looks like a hipster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was ahead of his time. The streets of Detroit. But what's really cool is it was people that started this evolution of the automobile and it's going to be people that ensure that we have this mobility solution solved so that we can spend more time with our families and less time on the roads or um, enjoy our performance, uh, cycling performance better. Um, and I want to engage all of you. I heard the speeches. I'm really excited. I'm really sad that you guys are going to be leaving us, but you know, in January next year, you guys become your own division, but that's, you're legit now. <laughs> you don't need us. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to be here supporting you in, in Washington, D.C., doing other things, uh, because I really believe in it. Um, and uh, the smiles that I see, and I just took a quick ride just before or over lunch, and uh, it's such a rush. It's such a rush. You guys are on to something. Stay there. I'm there for you. Call me if you need me, but this is a rocking great place to be, and your industry and what you're doing right now, you're pioneers. And I, Ooh. you know, we got to get a picture because this will be the one that we show. Yeah. In <laughs>